Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new edition of Pod by the Bay. I'm your host, Nathan Bonjo, alongside me, Seth Barnador, Robert Steeg, and we are proudly presented by the Bay Area Examiner. Uh, fellas, we had a pre-show meeting uh, yesterday, and then most of today we were kind of discussing, man, off-season, what do we really want to start talking about and you know sometimes the lord just blesses us with uh (laughs) things to talk about um sometimes not great things but things to talk about nonetheless um i think first and foremost uh we should probably start with aac co-player of the year aac first team selection i believe he was unanimous first team selection uh chris youngblood has entered the portal uh, from your AAC regular season conference champion men's basketball team. Um, we kind of figured this was happening, guys. Uh, for the, what about so after that Instagram post, it was kind of a foregone conclusion, but yeah, that we, we talked last week. We said the Instagram post was like a Rorschach text of how positive or negative you were. Yeah, <laughs> but most I think most most of us saw it as it certainly seems like he's leaving. And we we talked last week um, that it made sense, you know, uh, a guy of his skill set and size. You know, he's listed at six four. If he's really six four, and the plays the way he does, could probably make a pretty good one year uh, nil check from somebody. Uh, that's a little maybe has a uh, easier path to get to the tournament. He's been there once. I'm sure he'd like to get back. So he, it seemed like he was the most logical guy to leave. Um, turns out he's not the only one, but he was the most logical one. And I think he's, uh, you know, we talked about Alabama last week just because he's from Tuscaloosa, but right you now there's a few places in Alabama that. Could probably use a guy like him. Any any team will take a guy that's like tough defends and can shoot forty percent from three for his career, and oh, is yeah. six for four. So like he, he's going to be a wanted commodity, I think. Very, yeah, even, very much. You know, the second round game of the the NIT, I think, was probably one of his best showcase games. Um, you know, VCU's tough. They they were physical, and he was able to kind of do whatever he wanted. Now, you know, granted, you know, VCU, did, obviously not a tournament team, but they were pretty freaking close to beating Duquesne in uh, the, their uh, conference tournament. Um, so it, it was a pretty formidable thing. And what he's kind of built through his career kind of lends itself to, all right, I started Kennesaw. All right, I made – it was a jump up to USF, but I think he's ready to kind of – prove to the masses and pr- probably prove to himself a little bit that he can play at the the higher level. You know, Amir uh, Abdurrahim had always kind of bragged about kind of keeping him away from the majors and, and getting him to go to a lower mid-major school. And uh, I think now's the time. And, uh, you know, Amir had a very nice send-off post for, for Chris and uh, another transfer out in Salton Miguel, which we long expected um to happen but i mean you, you really can't ask more for a guy who came in to a terrible program turned it around set the foundation and won a championship in one year yeah god bless i mean you. that's 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 all we could have asked for i mean we could have asked for like you know the the you know ncaa tournament appearance too but <clears throat> you know sometimes you had it in your hand and then sometimes it's taken out of your hand and so on and so forth. But I mean, I, to me, the, <laughs> the tipping point for me, cause again, we've, we've dealt with years of Johnny Ford and cryptic tweets and posts and hourglasses and soon emojis and everything like that. So I, I take zero nil into what they post. But when he didn't follow Jamil Reynolds after uh, Jamil Reynolds uh, committed to USF, I was like, yeah, he gone. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, you can have my locker, you know, I'll, I'm, maybe maybe we'll cross paths for uh, about 12 hours here and then uh, I'll be out of your hair. So, 
But I mean, like I said, I mean, Chris, Chris had no, no loyalty. I mean, took a blind leap of faith, literally to follow Amir to USF and it paid its dividends, man. I mean, that's all we could ever ask for. And, and he's a guy I think that maybe his impact will be if this is turns into kind of Amir being here for a while and it's a long term program here, uh, him coming in and help delay the foundation. Uh, Goalish referred to him as like their the basketball team's Byron Brown after, when he went and watched their practice. Um, so he's he's kind of you know that leader. So they his impact could be felt for a while from now. So even though you only got him for one year, um, if 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 Amir sticks, sticks around, this will be kind of it'll be a name that you remember for a long time for helping kind of right the ship here a little bit. Yeah. And um, to another guy who helped kind of right the ship and was on a sinking ship last season, Salt Miguel uh, officially puts his name in the portal. He's also going to enter the NBA draft while still maintaining eligibility, doing all of his due diligence. Um, we saw a post that he had a Zoom call with the Oklahoma staff. So there, there's that. Um, I think there's definitely a market for – for him, Seth, you've kind of harped on this basically since he kind of broke out. Like, if this is your chance to get paid, don't don't mess it up by playing another year in college. No, I wouldn't. I mean, just looking back through his, and we were Steve and I were talking about this off air. You know, this year he shot thirty nine percent from three and eighty percent from the free throw line. His best marks previously, where he shot sixty nine percent from the free throw line in twenty twenty two and 33% from three last year. He was shooting – he shot twenty per, around 20% his first two seasons of college basketball and shot 67 and 64% from the free throw line in his other two years of college basketball. So if this is – uh, he changed something in his mechanics, this is who he is now, great. Uh, and that could be – that very could be it, right? It could be the coaching change helping me tweak something – Perfect. See, I think Steve said he maybe he felt comfortable in his role, just allowed his natural talent to, to take over a little bit more. Awesome. But you do, you know, for lack of a better term, you do have the risk of turning back into a pumpkin, right? If this is a one right. year aberration. So, you know, with with his citizenship, he could go probably make a ton of money in Europe right now, I'd imagine, with his skill set. And this would be, I, that would be, if I was advising, that would be my. Advice is say test the NBA waters. You know, maybe you go in and crush a couple workouts. Maybe get a invite somewhere if you if you know if you're if you're hot. Which we've seen him. You know, some games he just looks like he can't miss at all. So right, you, you know, you get the right you get the right kind of feel and workout. Man, you know, awesome. If not, you can go to Europe. You don't have the U.S. passport, so you won't count against those kind of you know where there's a limit on U.S. players. You'll be able to get over there and uh, make some money. And I, if I'm guessing, is he on a student visa? I would Probably. assume so. It's, yeah. So NIL is not a thing for Not him. really a thing for him. Yeah. I mean, so, I, I think we kind of saw it this week. Zach Eady of Purdue really making a, a kind of a fuss about it. He's Canadian. So he can't make any NIL stuff. And that was kind of um, a conversation. Uh, uh, that we've kind of had with women's basketball here at USF that a lot of these girls can't make NIL money um, to, to play here. So there's really no incentive other than one to play for a coach and a style and et cetera, et cetera. The thing with Selton um, as much as the VCU game was like the coup d'etat for Chris Youngblood, it was the nadir of his season. Uh, I think he finished one for 11, 0 for four from three. Uh, obviously missed, misses the critical free throw at the end there after finally getting a shot to fall. Um, all right, I think he finished two for 12. I think the second yeah. second made shot was that his, layup. His, his offensive rating was 47. His pre- previous low on the season was 78. Yeah, or, I'm sorry, was, 72 against Maine. It, it just was not ideal for him to that be his last college game, which is maybe why he's kind of – testing what's out there in the market uh, at the college level, because there are still some 
very visible holes in his game. The guy can't dribble left, can't go left to save his life. Um, if he gets aggravated quickly, he just tries to bully you down, like awful shots that can kind of k- crush momentum. You love him for the heat checks when he's actually hit a couple. Yet kind of cringe a little bit when he's you know over four and he's just going to jack up a 30 footer because hey i was feeling it um there's he's also 23 apparently yeah he's also on the older side right and i think um you, you're gonna probably see this in the nfl draft with michael Penix, who's like 40 like he's gonna get dinged for that obviously having knees of a four-year-old for michael Penix jr also uh an issue but um at some point like you're, it's just not worth it. I think he's, I think he's older than Anthony Edwards. So, like, at what point do you kind of figure out? All right, do I have at least one more year in college where I can make make some money and then go overseas and then go from there? I just, I don't know. I I don't know what the answer is for him. Um, I hope he fig- figures it out. I hope he learns how to go left. I think He'll that be... would unlock a large a large, large aspect of his game. I, I think he'll be 24 before the next season tips off. So the time is right probably for him to go oh, try yeah. to strike while the old iron is hot. So, Anthony um, Edwards is 22, by the way. Yeah. <clears throat> Not getting any younger. No. But, hey, if Van Wilder can do it, why can't he? Um, there's also probably, um, a little note, uh, Joey Knight of the Tampa Bay times, um, kind of just dropped this into a story, uh, on Monday, um, case and prior also probably not expected back. So I guess it frees up the budget. I don't know. I don't know. It, <laughs> You expect yeah. I, you expect <clears throat> these things to happen. You expect the, the kid who's six ten, who basically was almost a, a walking double double for most of conference season to level up, and I think that's probably what he's going to do. Opens more roster spots, um, uh, and the the underlying thing here is with Nate Oates announcing on Monday night that he's not taking the Kentucky job. I don't feel as worried about. Amir Abdurrahim leaving for another head coaching job. But nothing would surprise me anymore. And we can always, always, always blame SMU for this problem if it doesn't. Yeah. It's a weird domino effect of I, – I think the uh, guy, a mutual from, uh, from Twitter from Dallas said that uh, they're lo- – like Rob Lin- – or not Rob Lanier. Who was their coach before? <clears throat> Whoever was before, like – called like a missed called like a timeout like a very bad situation in like 2021 or something like that and that eventually led them to like a Q3 loss and that eventually led to them missing the NCAA tournament which led to them getting fired and that was the the small domino of coach Calipari <laughs> takes fried chicken money or <laughs> a frozen chicken tender money to to go to uh, Arkansas which I have to say this as of the recording, as of the 9.27 p.m. on April 8th, hasn't happened yet. I think it's too far gone. Oh, now. It, it's it's happening. Uh, but you know, there I think there's a lot of legal details that are that are going to unfold. Have you um, seen have you seen the uh the Wikipedia entry of the chicken man going around that he started school at Arkansas and then transferred to USC and then finished at SMU and then yeah. took the law back at Arkansas. So he basically went to every school that was involved in the, in the dominoes. <laughs> That's the conspiracy theory I believe in. Um, but uh, Nate, to, Nathan, to your point, what you're speaking to there, and I think you're referring to is I'm not necessarily too worried about the off season turbulence because Amir, at least as far as the player situation, the uh, like Amir's developed Selton from being a not so very good player into a pretty good player in one offseason by getting him in the right role. And, and, and you know, got a guy in Chris Youngblood 
who had no stars and one offer out of high school into a, you know, a high major or excuse me, a, a high mid majors conference player of the year. Like the guy can develop talent. The guy can, can spot it from a mile away. I, I'm not too worried about the, the, the player departures, who's staying, who's going or anything like that. Cause that's happening everywhere. Right. New guys are going to come in. I mean, it, it, I literally made a post about it. It's, you know, USF gets a good player. We get super excited about it. We watch them win accolade after accolade. We panic. We're worried about them leaving. We say, no, 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 just enjoy the wins. Just enjoy the wins. And then they leave. And then, oh, no, no, no. Like, how are we going to replace their 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 fortitude? How are we going to replace their metrics? Blah, 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 blah. And then we bring in another good player, and then we're going to repeat this cycle for the next 30 years until, you know, we all combust from the sun's explosion. Yeah, kind of. Um, it seems like when this stuff happens, it like with good teams, obviously people get attached to their favorite players. I, you know, obviously it's no secret here, folks, but Sean King is my favorite football player of all time because it was during a really awesome time for the Bucks. Same with, you know, Quint Flowers, obviously transcendent player, but like that 2015 team has those kind of guys, right? This 2023 20, USF football team has those guys too. Like you, you're going to hate it when Sean Atkins graduates or if Byron leaves, things like that. Like that, those are the things that you kind of latch on to. You get your favorite players for a very fun team. Scott Casimir remains my favorite baseball player uh, ever because of his run in 2008 um, with the race. Uh, you just kind of get attached Kids move on regardless if, if it's in one to seven years, depending on the how COVID is, uh, the COVID rules are um, going forward. Who knows? But it, it, things happen. We move on. Basketball is going to get played in the fall. Well, winter. Basketball is going to start getting played in the fall and then in the winter and then in the spring. And there, they will, there will be – players with South Florida and, and Tampa Bay on their chest. And we're going to be like, Oh my God, how did we get so lucky to have such and such on our team? I don't know. Carter I, Knox. <laughs> Carter Knox. <laughs> That's great, baby. Yeah. No, I, I love how pool, uh, they're going to do the, the pool of the other money. Right? Yeah. The, these guys entering the portal was actually a salary dump. <laughs> right. More move. funds available. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. This is the yeah. Knicks move where they trade all their assets thinking Kevin Durant's going to show up, and then he goes, no, I don't want to. It's going to be. Just, I just, mean, <laughs> listen, why would why would Chris Youngblood announce after Calipari to Arkansas is confirmed? I mean, ob isn't it obvious after the decommitment was announced early this morning, then later that day he, he gets in the portal? It's obvious, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> they got to clear the cap space. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so – there's that. Uh, I think that's the basketball for. Oh, uh, I get. Do you guys talk about Jose last week? I can't. Remember. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, we, I can't okay. remember the weeks. I got sick last week, and it it's just been an absolute blur of a week. Um, so good. Um, that was taken care of. Um, glad Jose's back. Um, it was so real. <laughs> yeah. Like it was. It was. It was pretty real. Um. Moving on, softball sweeps Memphis, who may be the worst softball team in human existence. Hmm. Um, was it 179 walks they've allowed this year? Was that the yeah. number? So walks? Walks. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. This, <laughs> poor, this poor girl has 104 walks. And, like, there are pitchers that, that don't even get that in their career. I would I would reckon Georgina Cork does not have 104 walks in her career. Oh god, here we go. Let's check. Or live, pretty live on Pod close. Pod Day. Oh my god. Maybe she did. She pitched a lot. She did pitch. That's the problem. She pitched a lot. Like I'm sure I could pull like an Alabama pitcher. Actually, no, because they pitched them even more. Um, but yeah, man, they, I have oh god. Hold on, let's a little worst. Hold on. 
Where's the career numbers? Oh, crotch. You played for five years, too. Crap. Oh, uh, um, well, I can, I, yeah. That's not bad. Well, I'll just give it the rest of the season. It's, it's, if you, <laughs> yeah. If you uh, took out her, uh, like, if we're going to be fair and say the, you know, four years since uh, Georgina got an extra one under her belt, um, took out the take middle out, one, took out 34. Yeah. She'd be at it. Oh, my God. That is embarrassing. Yeah, one of the uh, – I, I was I was busy this weekend, but I, I, I chimed in and checked in on those, and I was like, I don't know why I'm checking in on this, like – I, I have I have more faith, more blind faith that Memphis isn't going to win another softball game this season uh, in conference. My my God, are they terrible? Yeah, it was <clears throat> kind of disgusting um, seeing those numbers kind of in real life. And then uh, baseball sweeps first place Wichita State. Um, and Wichita State not bad. They were first in the American uh, heading into the weekend. Uh, seven three eight seven, and then three two on a walk off bunt on Sunday. Um, they they call that the Nathan Bond special. God, <laughs> Billy Mole, I love him so much, but he loves bunting more. And I sent I sent a text message to someone on Sunday. I was like, man, his love for bunting is incredible. Mm-hmm. And the reply back was, well, you should have seen them hit with runners in scoring position today. <laughs> I understand it. <laughs> did, he, did he make him point for the fences like a major league? And then yeah. Oh, God. What a scene. What a scene in the movie. But the, the funny thing of the entire weekend was Saturday. So Drew Brutcher uh, with a, a, a caught a fly ball and then threw a guy out at second. And then also had a Jose Canseco defensively later in the game where a ball hits his glove and bounces over and pops over the fence for a two run home run. Um, it was, uh, I think eight, three going into the ninth and uh, Wichita scores four, two of which were off a, an assisted drew brusher uh, two run Homer, which. How do they score those? It's a home run. Oh, it just counts as a home run. Not an error. It count, just counts as a home run. Didn't that happen the same day in like a major league game where they kind of the guy it bounced off his glove and went over the fence? I think it happened the exact same day. Oh, it's shocking. Tough. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be shocking. It did. I am, I'm almost certain. I hate you. So I hate me too. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, wild, wild affair. But uh, good job by them. Um, I don't know if this is riding the ship, but it's. Definitely a start in the right direction, especially after um, what happened Tuesday. That was <clears> – <throat> I got to go on like a 30-second tangent on this. Go uh, ahead. I went to – we went to our uh, – our, our, uh, where my true love for season tickets, my Strass Center Broadway season tickets. Uh, we went to our show on Tuesday. And uh, the show – when the show started, it was 7 nothing USF. And at intermission, so at, at about an hour and a half later, it was 19 to 9. <laughs> and I, the only thing that I could say was just like, just classic big baseball, baby. That's all it is. I mean, it's literally uh, whose line is it, anyways? The points, uh, everything's made up and the points don't matter. See, so I don't believe in midweek baseball. We're, I don't believe it. We I just don't, don't even it. count it. Like, golly. That was. <laughs> remarkable stuff like i saw so tuesday's when i started feeling really bad and i saw that they lost to setson and i was like wow that sucks and then i saw how they lost to setson and i was like billy you're killing me dude. <laughs> um anyway they uh they host the Foon on tuesday and then they go on the road uh for three at two lane this coming weekend um I guess kind of uh, still on the back burner. Spring football, spring games on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> eh. We're not going to see anything. All right. We will we be there? We'll be there. 
We'll be there, right? We'll be we'll be there because I'm I'm contractually obligated to be there. Wow. I'm contractually well, obligated to drink three to five beers and watch our walk-ons uh, play for seventy five percent of the game. Uh, so you know what we call want, that we call that a good time. That is gonna be a good time. Are, are do you want to go? Oh uh, yeah, it's not gonna be streamed anywhere, so it's only gonna be able to watch it. Gotta make it work. Okay. I I'll see. I was supposed to go to Wiki Watch this weekend and I saw that it was this weekend. I was like, oh maybe. It's at two o'clock. So it's uh not in uh not a nighttime game, so it's yeah, gonna be really hot. Yeah. Actually it's supposed to rain this week, so it might actually not be no, it's gonna be miserable. Um <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> yeah. I mean I the the thing that I'm looking forward to the most in this spring game in in the most optimistic way possible is that we all just have a good time and we all, you know, go to the stadium and people show up at like, you know, one o'clock and they get in there and we have awkward encounters with everyone. And, you know, if you see us, you know, please say hello, the whole thing. Um, I promise none of us are mean. And then, you know, 2 30 will roll around and we'll, we'll we'll really be in the swing of it where you know we we have a walk on QB Ryan Bolduck uh taking taking snaps and uh you know people are being turned away at the gate. We know that's gonna happen. Capacity crowd apparently broke the ticketmaster link this uh this morning when they went on sale. And then uh then we're gonna overreact to a bunch of guys hitting the transfer portal after. So that'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's called college football. That's, what it That's is. college football, baby. I mean, high of 81, low of 59. <laughs> that sounds like a the day. thing that I'm most curious about is if uh, the most recent uh, transfer, Jack Wilty, is, is going to be able to play. Because didn't they say like, uh, Guys who transfer for like the basketball things, guys that transfer are like immediately eligible and they can like play in practice and blah blah. Like, are there any rules against? I think they're gonna enroll, be enrolled. It's enroll first. Oh, okay, so he'll probably be on the sideline wearing wearing jersey and shorts. Maybe. So <laughs> we'll see. Um, I think that's it for now. Track and field's really good, um, but we've got a mailbag. Ponderosa to record. So we're going to go do that. Make sure you guys subscribe to the Discord, subscribe to the Patreon, help us provide the best coverage possible. Um, Three away from 300 in the Discord. Let's get it. So we're almost there. So. Oh, maybe the 300th person could get a cool hat. Maybe. <laughs> Let's see. I don't want to get struck by lightning or anything. <laughs> the ghost of not the ghost. Well, the the, the voice of Michael Kelly rains <laughs> down on us. <laughs> oh well, we'll see. All right, thanks for tuning in. Um, we're gonna go record this. Uh, be safe. Be healthy. Go Bulls. Go Bulls. Go Bulls.